Hello, you beautiful faceless interweb people. I'm Dave. And I'm the beautiful Jacob. And I have a face. Yeah, and today we're asking the big questions. Who are we? Where did we come from? And is this all a simulation? And if so, does it matter? But we're actually only going to be answering the just slightly less important question. Should I jam the AMD Ryzen 2600X or straight Ryzen 5 2600 into my gaming rig? But we're not going to keep you in suspense. The simple answer is, if you're moderately loaded and intrinsically lazy, get the 2600X. But if you've ever so much as prodded a BIOS in your PC gaming life, then it's all about the impressive non-X Ryzen 5 2600. Right, well, I guess we're done here then. Uh, come on, there's maybe at least five other people watching on after this to listen to us talk processor. And to call us names in the comments. Yeah, I'm that. I'm that. The second gen Ryzen processors launched in April, bringing with them essentially the same quality Zen-based CPU design released last year, but with a year's worth of extra learning, a new 12 nanometer production process, and some neat little features. Yes, and the resulting Ryzen 7 2700X and Ryzen 5 2600X have quickly become some of our favorite gaming processors, thanks to their multi-threaded performance and improved gaming chops. But while those two chips were the first out the door, AMD have also released the non-X series versions of those Ryzen 2 processors. They are the cheaper, slightly slower CPUs, but how much of a difference does that really make? Well, essentially we're talking about higher frequencies added on the stop clock speed of the X-series Ryzen processors. It's all linked into the second gen precision boost and extended frequency range features, giving the more expensive chips a little extra bump. But all the 2000 series Ryzen chips benefit from these updated features, allowing the cores to clock a little higher than the standard base frequency should there be thermal and power headroom available to them. And the X-Series just have a little extra room to manoeuvre. In terms of their relative specs, the 2600X has another 200 MHz higher base clock and a 300 MHz higher boost clock. But in all honesty, we can dispense with the listing the relative processor clock speeds, not least because they're going to be plastered on the screen over there somewhere, somewhere about here, but also because those numbers bear little relation to how fast the chips actually run in your rig. Yeah, suffice to say, neither stay at their base clock for very long, so long as you're cooling them with little more than a sense of neglectful indifference anyway. <laughs> In very simple, stating the bleeding obvious language, the 2600X performs comfortably faster than the non-X version. Given the differences in frequency, that's not exactly headline news to anyone. Multi-threaded pace is still impressive, but running at just over 3.7 GHz out of the box means a single-threaded speed of the 2600 is pretty limited. But those differences are largely irrelevant. Our 2600 was easily as capable as the 2600X of hitting 4 GHz plus frequencies. And when you push both chips to an overclocked 4 to 4.2 GHz all-core speed, the performance delta completely vanishes. At stock speeds, only the CPU sucking Civilization 6 benchmark showed up any tangible difference in performance. And even that becomes a non-issue with the slightest of overclock. And it's all very easily achieved thanks to AMD giving all Ryzen chips the same opportunities to be overclocked. Just dive into the BIOS or Ryzen Master Utility if you really can't bear any non-Windows apps and set the XMP AMP settings and set the CPU ratio up to anything between 40 and 42. Easy! Yeah, even with the slimline Wraith Stealth cooler which comes with the 2600 for free, we could comfortably get the chip running at 4.1 GHz without any trouble. None of the second gen Ryzen CPUs are monster overclockers without liberal application of a lot of liquid nitrogen, which means the non-X chips are never exactly left eating their brawnier siblings dust. So why wouldn't you pick the more affordable AMD CPU? The only reason you wouldn't is because you have the self-awareness to know that you simply won't be asked to tweak the chip yourself. And let's face it, humans are in general lazy AF, so spending another $30 on something so you don't have to dip into the BIOS to get the performance you crave is perfectly understandable. So if that's you, grab the 2600X, pay the extra and languish at the 3.9 GHz under load. The rest of us are going to gently tweak the standard 2600 chip and reap the benefits. Yeah, when they're both hitting the same clock speeds, you're getting identical gaming performance out of the pair. Whether we're talking about the CPU-intensive Civilization 6 test, or the more GPU-centric Far Cry 5 benchmark. Whatever you throw at it, only the terminally lazy or pathologically stupid are going to actually suffer from picking the 2600 over the 2600X. But they are both fantastic gaming CPUs, offering 6 cores and 12 threads of processing power for both games and serious computational work too. With the Ryzen 2 performance updates, AMD have closed the gaming gap on Intel and have made it very difficult to recommend the competition's products. You're not going to miss out picking either of these great little number crunches, but for our money, we're going with the classic Ryzen 5 2600. And there you have it. 
That's why we think you should pick the non-X Ryzen over the more expensive chip. It's almost as overclockable, and when you take the time to tweak its clocks, the 2600 is just as capable as a gaming CPU. So, thanks for watching, and if you haven't absolutely hated what you've just seen and heard, then give us a little like and subscribe to the channel for more PC gaming and hardware good times. Yep, what you said. Bye!